So chest and back was particularly difficult, and I think it will be for anybody who's worked out in the gym and had access to all that great equipment, and then they're at home and they need to find stuff that's heavy enough to challenge them. I think I nailed it. I tried a few goofy exercises this week as far as trying to get enough weight or try to find ways to attack myself at various angles. And these are the ones that I kept, these are the ones that I found were really helpful and gave me that feeling of being pumped up and excited after a workout. I will not be working out alongside you today. I've kept this video short so you can scroll through it and find the exercises easily. There's also a reps and sets structure at the end that you can refer to if you don't want to watch the whole video in the end. Okay, this is the bare minimum warm up. I would suggest maybe adding a few more moves if you want. Something like push ups against the wall would be good. We're gonna start the upper body pretty hard. So the first exercise is the supine pull up. It's a short range of motion, but I find holding myself a little bit at the top makes it very challenging. I'm working hard quite early here. You can do this quickly. It's a lot easier when you do it quickly. But for those people who are used to doing pull-ups on the regular at the gym, this will be a challenge if you hold it. Chest against the bar. Not sure if a broomstick would work for this. I don't think I'd try. The hockey stick, I was pretty careful to test it out beforehand as it was. This is also a good position to work the hip flexors and glutes. The reverse plank. This one's easy. In my bag, I have something like 12 pucks and 10 water bottles. So we're at about 25, 30 pounds. So I'm trying to keep my chest from rotating at all. My supporting knee is giving my supporting arm a little bit of distance so I can breathe well. So I've loaded this bag up with 48 pounds. And this at full range of motion, especially when I slow down, is a challenging workout for 10 reps per side. I did find myself working really hard on this one, even cheating a little bit, grunting, hissing. You can do this unsupported as far as you don't have to have your knee on something, but I find it helps eliminate the lower back trying to help uh, that uh, the tendency to try to twist is subdued somewhat. So on my magical trunk, I've put all the little things that I don't think will break. I hope the water doesn't break one of these days. So this one, I'm trying to keep myself, my hips and my chest square, trying not to be in a twisty position. My arm is coming out for a wide grip kind of pull. Again, play around with this. Your leverage will be different depending on how tall you are. I find using my elbow to help support me on that outside leg was a huge value. Oh, this one sucks. I mean, if you have a door frame and you put a screw below and maybe even above each end, I think this thing would hold up really nicely. But it did slip around and I don't think I show here that I almost lose it but it's a very vulnerable position to be fully extended here. So yeah, if you, um, if you own your home or you're a renter and you're willing, oh yeah, I did show it. And, you, and you're willing to do a little bit of a modification and repair afterwards. Go ahead, it's a nice full extension. And I figured while I had the trunk loaded up, I might as well hit the curls. This two-handed, taking my time would be a challenge. Going one-armed, pretty hardcore but it felt nice it's been a while since I blessed the bias the incline push-up this one works the lower chest and well it works the entire chest but with a little bit of extra stress on the lower chest and of course the tries are working here This can be a little more fun than just a straight up flat push up because on these chairs I can get just a little deeper. But I wouldn't go much more than like an inch or two deeper than you would on a regular push up. These shoulders are temperamental. That was a bit saggy at the beginning of the decline push up. But I am trying to get nice and low so I have a tendency to, to want to change the position of my chest and head so I don't 
eat too much dust. This one's particularly good for the upper chest. So that midline, well the entire chest again gets work. This one's great for the midline and those upper pecs that look good when you wear your shirt open. Like a player. Is player the right thing nowadays? That's kind of dandies, right? You can do that off anything. There's so many things around the house to do that off of. The chair dip. So you'd think it was easy being kind of all crooked with my form like this, but getting my hips a little more underneath my chest made this quite difficult because I'm not using as much chest. I'm using a fair amount of lower chest and the tries are working quite hard here too. So yeah, between these moves, we've already hit the upper and lower chest. And mid chest too. Once you're a little bit tired of the chest fly, it's the right thing to do. You don't need to go terribly heavy with this. You just need very good form. A slight bend in those elbows and keep that same angle all the way through. Pausing at the bottom is a way to work your chest to the extreme without the risk of super heavy weight. Even in the gym, I like to do this one light. I don't have any goals as far as my chest fly. I just like to feel it, feel that midline working. Imagine I'm stretching out my chest in a healthy, productive way. Yeah, that's nice. So the single arm fly was the exact same form, but I find I have to have much wider feet here to keep myself balanced. And this also to me is almost primarily a core exercise keep everything strung together. I'm really using my abs and my obliques. Feels like uh, I don't know, a very, a very wrestly kind of feeling on this one. To keep her. I've seen guys doing it this, this at the gym and I just wasn't sold, but having tried it again, I, I like this. It's a great application to skating as far as um, the upper body and lower body being connected in more than just a, a forward backward way. I liked it. So that's really it. Oh yeah, that's it. So I don't know if there's going to be a bunch of new back and chest exercises. To me, this is the best I could do. There might be different angles, perhaps different ways of loading bags up. I'll, I'll figure that out in the future. But yeah, this is uh, what I leave to you. We've covered the whole body in a very basic way. So on the screen, I've put the sets and reps you should be doing. I'd say take maybe 20 to 30 seconds when you're doing something that's one side, then moving to the other. Maybe a full minute when you're going from a set that's like push-ups or decline push-ups, something that uses two hands at the same time. But I have structured this so you can keep moving. You don't have to take a lot of rest. We're going from chest to back and chest to back quite a bit. So each muscle group gets a little bit of a rest. So here I use some weights that weren't terribly heavy if I were to look at them in gym standards, but because these are awkward objects, some ridiculously light weights could put me in a, some awkward positions or maybe even injure me. So I had to be careful here. So I think I know what I can lift, but when it comes to bottles and a bag, I don't know. Yeah, so in the future, I would say don't follow the video, just go right to this end screen, set your music up, and then go through the list. Enjoy.